At some point in your 3D journey, you'll have to deal with lighting. And whether it is for animation or a custom feature of a 3D model, you want to be able to switch your light source on and off every time you need to. But how do you do that? Well, I have a simple answer for that, and it is drivers. Drivers are so powerful that you can use them for almost anything. In my previous video, we used them to control shape keys. But today, I'll show you how you can control emission shaders and light object with a simple driver. So first, we're going to give a material to our cube, and we're going to change it to an emission shader, and let's set the strength to 10. It's bright enough right now, but in EV we can enable bloom so that we get that glare effect. Much better. If you're using cycles, you'll have to use the compositor to get the glare. In the compositing tab, enable use nodes and press Ctrl Shift and right click on the render layers node so you can see the viewer. Then all you have to do is render an image of your scene and search for the glare node. Place it between the render layers and the viewer so you can see how it's changing. But don't forget to plug it to the composite node or you won't see the result on your final render. Now choose Fog Glow in the drop down menu and change the values to your liking. Now let's add a bone that's going to be our light switch. You can rename it as you want in case you have other bones in your scene. After that, we're going to enable the display of the bones axis in the armature tab and change its viewport display to wire so we can see the axis better. Now let's set the driver first, then I'm going to explain why we're doing it this way. So go to the material tab, right click on the emission strength value and click add driver. Let's choose average value and select our bone here. For the type, let's choose Z rotation and for space, local space. Now here's the explanation. I want the lights to be switched on when I rotate the bone on the Y axis of the world. But the thing is, the Y axis of the world corresponds to the Z axis of the bone. And since we are going to use the bones axis as reference for our driver, we are going to use the Z rotation for the type. And now, when you go in pose mode and you rotate the bone on the Y axis, you can switch the lights on or off. You can increase the strength of the emission by adding a modifier in the driver's editor. To do that, let's do a right click on the value here and click open driver's editor. And click anywhere on the curve and go to the modifiers tab, add a generator modifier and write 3 for example here. You can see that the emission is much stronger now. By the way, if you enter a negative value there, it would change the direction of the rotation of the bone, meaning that you'd have to rotate it from the left to right to switch the light on. Controlling a light object with a driver is similar to what we've done earlier. So you can see that I set up a little interior scene here. Basically, it's just a cube and I put a couple objects in it. We've got a point light and a bone. Let's increase the light strength so we can see better. And now let's add a driver. But this time, we're going to write our own expression instead of using average value. Because the average value is usually too low and it makes the light dim. We could still use it and add a modifier later, but since we're using big values, I prefer to do it this way. For the rest, it's the same as what we did earlier, but this time I chose Y location for the type so that the switch goes up and down to turn the light on or off. And now when we go into pose mode, we see that we can control the light by moving the bone up and down. We notice that it gets really bright or really dark when we move the bone too far, but we can fix that by adding a limit modifier. For that, let's open the driver's editor and go to the modifier tab and add a limit modifier. Here we can enter the minimum value and the maximum value that we want our light strength to stay in between. Notice here that I chose X instead of Y by mistake, but it somehow worked very well. I don't know exactly why, if by chance anybody does know, let me know in the comment section. But you can choose Y for your setup. And now our driver is clamped between those two values, so we don't have problems on the extremes anymore. Now that our driver is set, let's try to make a little animation with it. I'm going to make a couple of keyframes and duplicate them on the timeline. I'm also going to change the interpolation to constant to make the blinking more snappy. And this is the final result. There you have it. 
Now you know how to control light switch drivers, you can do cool things with it. By the way, this file is available on my Grimrock. You can download it to see how I made it. I really like using drivers for many things, such as custom properties on my rigs or shape keys, etc. They are really powerful and almost unavoidable for anybody that wants to get into 3D animation or rigging. That's it for this video, I hope you learned something today and if you want to know how to use drivers to control shape keys, I invite you to check out my last video. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video to support the channel and see you next time.